Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to take a second look at On One's new On One Ten software and the portrait module. Well, it must be Christmas because this month, not only have have one video from you, you're going to get a second one, which is this one. Now, in the last video, we looked at the new On One Ten software and some of the uh, developing modules that are in there and the effects and all sorts of different wonderful stuff. And we decided to do a follow up. And this one's going to be using the portrait retouching module that also comes in uh, our On One Ten software bundle. And uh, we're going to do this picture. This is the picture of me unfortunately and yes it does need a bit of retouching believe it or not and we're going to take you to the uh, to the software using this image we're going to do a little bit of color correction um, use some of the retouching uh, tools that are available in there and also get rid of a, a little bit of a sweaty head that I had going on this was in um, in Turkey it was in the summer so it's quite hot and uh, I had suntan lotion as well so that's my excuse for looking a bit of a sweaty Betty so uh, let's get into it and we'll start to use some of these tools and see what they got to offer. So I'm in Lightroom, I've got a DNG file um, on screen, I've done a little bit of processing on the image, I think too heavy just to kind of get the uh, black and white points uh, where I want them and now I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go to plugin extras and I'm going to go into on one portrait there and that will in a second open up in on one's portrait module and we can start to get all the points uh, in place that we need to it's going to uh, ask me now do you want to save this when i've finished as a re-editable smart photo which means i can open it back up into um, on one software and, and, and adjust it so it will save all the layers or do i want it flattened and um and and, and just apply those effects i'm going to do smart photo because i think that gives us the option of going back in and making adjustments if we need to so click on that and it should now in a second open up okay so it's open up on screen there is some presets here which you can go through uh, we're not going to do that we're going to do this, this from scratch um, and apply our own um, effects to this so I'm just going to just bring that over a little bit um, so the first thing it actually walks you through what it needs from you so it's asking me to click on the face in this little box and now it wants me to click to get started click on the center of each eye okay so uh, we're just going to go through this you don't have to do this you can you can actually uh, skip this if you don't want to do any kind of eye or math retouching uh, you can skip this but let's go through it so I'm going to click on the center of the eye there the center of the eye there now it's asked me to if you read this up here ask me to click on both corners of the mouth so what it's doing is actually you return it where the where the different parts of the image are the the eyes and the mouth so once we do that um, you can now drag to adjust these points so basically in a second we can go in and readjust these if need be so we don't need you for a second I'm just going to try and get a bit more real estate up on the screen let's just open this up a bit like so okay so let's just drag our preview across um, we can press done so that's telling us telling the software that we've now mapped the bits that we need so now you can see a preview of the eyes and the mouth if we're not happy with those which I'm not we can just start to drag these points in to give ourselves the shape we want of the mouth it's done a pretty good job but it's just not quite perfect enough same on the eyes these tools are to adjust the the clarity of the eyes and the brightness of the eyes so we don't really want to be going over the, the skin there so I'm just going to bring that in like so and then just the bottom as well to get that curve right now you it's already applied some adjustments, a default adjustment to these. I don't actually want to, well, let's just walk through it. I don't actually want to do any adjustments on my mouth. The the mouth, um, down the bottom here, you've got the mouth section. It's for whitening the teeth. So if I just drop this down, you can see that on screen. If you look down here on screen, so it's just whitening the teeth or drop it. I don't want to look <laughs> like Bugs Bunny uh, and have my, people's eyes drawn too far to that. So I'm going to allow it to brighten my teeth a little bit, but not too much. So 
trash drop, drop that down to 21. The vibrance for the mouth is basically if you've got a model with red lipstick on and you really want to make that lipstick pop, you can bring this up and really make them, uh, you know, really pop and a little more saturation to them. Uh, but obviously, I've got, I haven't got lipstick on and so I don't really want to look like I have. So I'm going to turn that one off completely. Um, the eyes and mouth, okay, same sort of thing here. The whitening is to whiten up the eye eye whites there if you go too far it's gonna look stupid um so again i'm gonna drop it down a little bit if you turn it off that's before i'm just gonna bring it up a little bit maybe somewhere around there the detail as i said it's like um it's like a cloudy slider in lightroom it's like um, which increases the contrast of the midtones that's how i see it and it's gonna just like sharpen the eyes and if i go too far as you can see it just looks ridiculous again so just be aware, you don't want to go too far with these tools uh, and make it uh, look too ridiculous. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit, like so. And with a portrait, the eyes are the most important probably bit in the image. So you do want to draw attention to those areas, but uh, just to have a bit of restraint. Um, so I've just done those to get them out of the way, really. So uh, now we're going to move on to the skin. Now, if this box is ticked, face only what that will do the software will just try and just affect just the face if you've got a model um, or a guy with a vest on and you want to retouch the skin on the shoulders and stuff you can untick this and it will it will try and obviously um, get that skin as well on the shoulders etc but in this image I only want to concentrate on the face I'm gonna leave that ticked Blemishes basically will smooth out uh, the blemishes in the skin. If you look at the uh, forehead here, as I bring the blemish slider up, it's actually just smoothing out uh, some of those some of those little bumps and notches there, and it's sort of making my skin glow. Again, we've got to be very careful with this. So I'm going to bring this down to about 25 for now. Okay, smoothing is going to smooth out the skin, and if I go too far, you can see I end up glowing like some space alien. So again, I want to bring this down, and I would advise bring, turn it off to begin with, and just bring it up bit by bit, like so. Don't want to go too far. So that's not looking too bad. If you're not sure, turn on the off and on the preview. So press there. There's the original, and there's with it on. Original, on. So it's just smoothing out bits there, making it glow a little bit. Uh, I might just bring up the blemishes a bit more. Bring down the smoothing before and after, like so couple more features uh, if you get into the bottom here there's the compare mode uh, press on the A and it will give you a little preview of the before and after of the image um, also useful is the uh, mask mode and we'll actually show you I'll just turn the compare mode off actually tell you, show you where the mask is masking and not masking and so for instance uh, it, it automatically selects a brush for you you can add the skin or to take away from the skin so if I wanted to get a little bit more um, protect the eyebrows a bit more I could paint that in red there that will stop the skin um, retouching from affecting that area or likewise if we find that it's not quite getting enough of the skin like the top of my head here I can actually paint away the mask slightly to allow more of the effect at the top here like so and maybe a bit more around the sides of the face there and down uh, along my neckline like so so that's a good way of just you know helping the software to mask or or, or not mask as it's uh, is the case in certain areas so that's quite a good thing to do so yeah so, so basically that's kind of got us in a good starting point if we're not happy and we still think there's more that needs to be done we have a couple more manual tools here we've got this one here which is the um i think the magic eraser i think they call it it's uh very much like the content perfect eraser sorry it's more like, like the content aware tool within within um within photoshop so we literally just uh, select that and then we can paint along some of these lines if i can get my mouse to work let's just get my pen tool and it will 
do its best to uh, basically clear those lines up so it just uh, adds a bit more to the retouching it does take a little bit of uh, computer power to get that to work there's another one down here and like so it just takes some of those bits away and tries to blend them so that's quite a powerful tool and uh, very quick to use although it does take a bit longer than the next tool we're going to use the next one is this one and this one basically is um, a the brush tool and uh, it's a bit more simple to use and it's supposed to be a little bit quicker and this is really just to kind of paint over little blemishes on the skin uh, and my computer slowed down a bit here so it's a bit behind and that's for smaller areas apparently uh, so those are the tools to, uh, retouch brush tool and the perfect eraser so the perfect eraser is a bit more powerful in my opinion so let's just carry on using that and again you've got to be careful we don't want to you know obviously take out too much detail so let's take that bit down there maybe just take some of these larger wrinkles off my face It does a pretty good job, I think. Um, like so, so, let's just do a preview. As before, there's after. So, quite a big difference. It didn't like you doing very much, but it's quite a big difference. And these aren't too bad. There's a couple of marks here I'm not 100% sure it's done a great job. Let me just go over those bits again. You don't want any telltale signs of it. Uh, been used. That's a bit better. Sometimes with these contact aware tools you need to go over the areas a couple of times. So it's not done too bad a job. There's before, there's after. So uh, the next thing we can look at is the colour correction. So uh, there's an amount slider and then you've got the warmth and colour shift. So what this is actually going to do is add the warmth is what it is. What it is. It's going to add a bit more warmth to my skin which isn't a bad thing. It's obviously earlier on in my holiday, and I want to want to didn't have a too good too good a tan at that point, so I'm gonna add a bit of warmth there, and uh, you can obviously change the color shift a little bit. It's either gonna go a bit more green or magenta. Let's just drag that back. Uh, somewhere around there doesn't look too bad. Again, preview before, after. The final thing um, I'm going to do here is the, um, where has it gone, is the evenness slider. And this is going to kind of, if you've uh, if you've got somebody with quite, you know, quite bad skin, like red skin, uh, inflamed skin, or maybe they've been out on the lash having a few too many beers the night before, this can help sort of just even out the skin uh, a little bit more, the colour of the skin. Um, so let me just turn this off. I don't know if I've got too many bad problems there. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can see that's really taking too much colour out now. So we need to bring this back. But that will uh, that will help uh, relieve some of these sort of redness in the skin. So again, before, after. So not a bad job. I'm still not quite hundred percent sure up here. To me, it looks, or maybe I'm just being fussy. Looks a little bit. Uh, to retouch let's just get the this brush tool and go those areas and just see if i can make clean them up a little bit make the transition look a bit better okay so that looks a bit better what i have done is just played around this warmth slider a little bit i think it was a little bit too strong so i've just dropped that down to around 12 there which i think is uh, probably enough um the last thing we're going to look at i mentioned earlier about me looking a bit sweaty in this picture it was quite a hot day in turkey as i said i was on the back of a boat in shade so you've got quite a nice even amount of light on the front um but towards the top you'll see there's a lot of reflections on the top of my head uh, as you've noticed no doubt notice I'm a bit follically challenged up there and it is a problem uh, getting a lot of reflections coming off and uh, so what we're going to do is we've got a, a function in here called shine now it's not particularly <laughs> meant for this uh, particular problem but it will help uh, take some of the kind of hot spots off the top of the head there so I'm just going to drag this across so we can have a look if I bring it too far you can see this has got this quite nasty transition uh, so we don't want to go too far with it but it just might help 
take a little bit of uh, that gloss, glossy look off the top of my head. And somewhere around there, let me just turn it off and turn it up a little bit. I think it's helping a little bit. It's not uh, not brilliant, but it, it's designed to take sort of uh, those kind of very hot spots off your skin. So uh, a perfect example, I think, this image is on that. That's just helping that blend a little bit better. Let's just have a look at before and after. Before, after. So you can see around here where you've got that transition. Um, there's bef after and before. So I think that's helped quite a bit. I do look definitely less sweaty in that picture. So there you go. So that's done a pretty good job. What I'm going to do now is show you an um, a, almost identical image. Um, it was it was done a little bit f uh, a while ago. It was for another tutorial actually about using the frequency separation and also about alleviating this very problem about sort of these hot spots on the head. And I thought it might be quite a nice idea to, to compare the two. So let's apply this and we'll go back into Lightroom. Okay, so we're back in Lightroom, and I've got the DNG file, the original file was started out from on screen, and I've got the image that's come back out of the uh, On One Portrait module that the work we've just done on. So you can see there's quite a big difference there. Uh, we've got rid of that uh, sort of hot, sweaty forehead, which is uh, a good look, or better look, I should say. So that's, um, that's helped a little bit. And we've just very subtly taken some of these kind of wrinkles out the top of my head, and uh, it's not done a bad job at all. I'm going to just open up Photoshop now. I'm going to show you another image, which is this one. It's not really fair to do a direct comparison because obviously I developed it slightly different and it's warmer and more saturated, whereas this is a slightly different look. But I want to show you the layers involved in doing what is a very similar thing, but manually within Photoshop. So let me just go in and open this up. So here's the image, um, as I said, this is a, a, for another tutorial a, a while ago I did on, on the very similar, or it might even be the same image. So to produce a similar effect to what we've been through with on one, I've had to obviously create quite a few layers here to uh, to do this frequency separation. Now you can use an action to build this, so it's not quite as complicated as it needs to be uh, if you've got the action. But it still takes, you know, a little bit of work and manual work through through uh, in Photoshop to achieve this. I've also added a, a, a layer here which was designed to take some of that kind of sweaty look off, uh, off the forehead again. So it is possible to do this manually uh, within Photoshop but it is a little bit more work and I would say that if I had to guess um, the difference between doing it in Photoshop manually and doing it in the on one software I would imagine um, you could probably do it in less than half the time, maybe even a quarter of the time. It's just a matter of whether it's done a, as good enough a job. And I think it probably has in this in this situation, looking at the final results, I'm pretty happy with it. So if you need to sort of do some quick retouching on some skin, maybe you've got some portraits you need to get out the door pretty quick, this would be definitely worth a look. Uh, I think it's a very powerful bit of, uh, bit of software uh, for that. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope that's giving you a bit of an overview view of that that module within the on 110 software and um, but as i said before in the previous video you can download a 60-day trial of the software so you've got no excuses to not give it a roll yourself thanks for watching if i don't speak to you before have a great christmas and i'll hope to catch you again with a new video in the new year cheers